Aren't you Gerald McGoing Boing that I had to make sweet? I need a smart fellow to make all the sounds who can bark like a dog <coughs> and bay like the hounds. <coughs> Your gong is terrific. Your toot is inspired. We've come to. McGoing Boing, you're hired. All right, now, my, my nephew and I like to play a round or two of the, of the ancient game. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. Same to you, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, these mountain people, they're taciturn, they're tight-lipped. <laughs> Dry humor, very wry, you know. Waldo, uh, Waldo, pay attention now. You, you... <laughs> The smallest one was Madeline. He's out back with Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly? <laughs> There's a unicorn in the garden. Yes, that eye, the eye. That. His eyes staring. Milky white film. The eye, everywhere. Everywhere in everything. Mavericks, Mutiny, and Magoo. It's the story of a group of gifted young artists who rebelled against the popular cartoon standards of the time to create a brand new style. Human characters, adult stories, she had to have it or die. Intelligent humor, look at the way they let the old Bacchus mansion run down, and reflecting the modern art of the day. I was free. Completely redirecting the course of animation throughout the world. They influenced Hollywood, they influenced Disney, they influenced world animation. The UPA uh, had a great influence on the National Film Board of Canada as well. So when we were, when I was a kid in art school, we used to go to all the uh, UPA festivals at the old Gaiety Theater in Winnipeg. And uh, it was very, very exciting, and it was long before I ever thought of being an animator. This demo assembles a sample of the material collected so far for a 90-minute documentary on this pioneering and largely forgotten studio, UPA Pictures. There is much more to find, to license, and to recreate. UPA began in the early 40s by young animators picketing Disney Studios, which they viewed as an autocratic assembly line. UPA was an unusual studio because it was a studio, and yet every film looked like it was done by an individual, a different individual. Uh, most studio films look the same, that's the point of it, is that they have people drawing a certain style, and they're able to, like sausage, you know, create that factory-made pro product. Uh, UPA made a factory-made product, but each product was unique. At UPA, we had what we referred to as a unit system, where at Disney's, we all worked on what we referred to as an assembly line. There was one story department, one animation department, one layout department, one background department, where at UPA, we had story departments for each of the different units and a different director and different animation. They all worked together in units of five, six, eight people. And it worked very, very well. This is a storyboard conference on their first slide film, Sparks and Chips Got the Blitz, when they were still known as Industrial Film and Poster Service. I started as Industrial Films when it was the off. And I voted on the name for UPA. <laughs> 
Mary Kane was in the back room there with ink and paint, and uh, Steve Pesesto, and Dave Hilberman, and Zach Schwartz. In the side room were the animation unit. At that time was Bob Cannon, and then his assistant, Joyce Weir, and his obnoxious little in-betweener, Alan Saslov. And, uh, and on the other side of Alan Saslov was Paul Julian, trying to do layouts, but Alan Zaslow was throwing needy to erasers over the top at him. Hell Bent for Election, a campaign film for Roosevelt's 1944 re-election campaign, was their first animated film, which was quickly followed by government training films. I remember one of the more beautiful films, probably a classic today, was done on fear. And Zach Schwartz, who was a wonderful graphic designer, had designed it and Bob had animated it. I was the only one that could make uh, a Vought Corsair go into a tailspin because none of them could draw the reverse gull wings turning around. <laughs> so they gave me the scene to animate. It wasn't exactly character animation. In the late 40s, they landed a contract with Columbia Pictures to produce their Fox and Crow series. UPA was rapidly gaining major recognition and awards, so they were able to convince Columbia to allow them to create a new series, unlike any existing cartoons, void of hurt gags and silly animals, and instead featuring a human character who entertain adults as well as the kids. Which way to uh, Hodgepodge Lodge? Can't you read the sign? Well, certainly I can read the sign. What does it say? Over the years, Mr. Magoo's initial craggy features and grumpy personality... Come on, Waldo! Follow me! Yeah, 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 okay, Scatterbrain! ...became more rounded and amiable. Oh, oh no! Look at that! They've gone too far with the Cadillac this year. I was looking at the films. The animation is fun and funny. Magoo himself There's a film called... Uh, Hotsy Footsy, that has uh, Magoo doing this great dance. He's at his uh, reunion ball, I think it is. Uh, and and uh, he's doing a dance by himself while this jazz band is playing. And the actual animation of this old guy doing this little jig is, is hilarious. Good old Magoo. See you later, Charlie. There are at least a half dozen different stories on who created Mr. Magoo. We have two of them so far. Magoo was created out of a necessity. We didn't like doing animal pictures, and uh, so when I went to Columbia and said, you know, we'd rather not do these, they said, all right, come up with another series, and that's okay with us. You know, Francis, I always had an eye for you. Knowing that story was the most important part of making a film, I uh, retained Millard Kaufman, who had worked with us before in the early days of World War II, and laid out the uh, prerequisite that I wanted a, a human character, not an animal, and it had to be a series character, so whatever he was in the beginning, he had to end up the same way that he would change the world, he wouldn't change. And uh, he came up with, working together with him, he came up with the uh, idea of Mr. Magoo. John created him as a secondary character in uh Ragtime Bear, I think it was, which Art animated, which is gorgeous. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So I've also heard that Bacchus apparently tells a story that, that it was part of an act he did. Well, John designed them. The first drawings of them with John. That I'm absolutely positive of. Oh, what have I done? Using interviews like this with artists and industry experts and very little narration, UPA, Mavericks, Mutiny, and Magoo will trace the history of this tiny studio and how it was able to buck the system and create such an impact on the history of animation. They would do things like if the character had to walk up the stairs, they'd just pop the stairs on and the character would walk up the stairs. Needed a door, pop the door on. And uh, they would do sort of rhythmic things. Uh, it was almost musical the way they would move their characters towards a the door. They wouldn't just head to the door or jump to the door. They would 
If you remember the film Madeline. Two straight lines. It was very poetic. In rain. They had all these little girls in Paris and they would... Or shine. You know, snake through the city. You remember that? Our location tonight on our City at Night program is the United Productions of America, makers of the outstanding cartoons of these here United States, believe me. In 1952, a popular local Los Angeles television show did a live broadcast at UPA during the production of Madeline. What is your official title here with United Productions, uh, Bob? I'm what they call a director. A director. Now, what does that entail? Every week, we are finding more and more long-forgotten treasures that are slowly helping us piece together a documentary on one of the most vitally important and dramatic chapters in film history. Take the opportunity to thank you ever so much. The story of UPA, Mavericks, Mutiny, and Magoo. UPA was the best memories for me. I've had some pretty good times in the business. Believe me, my first year at Disney producing the DuckTales, and I had a great time, but there was nothing Nothing as nice as those years with the best people in the world.